Welcome to State Bar of Michigan's On Balance Podcast, where we talk about practice management and lawyer wellness for a thriving law practice with your hosts, Joanne Hathaway and Tish Vincent, here on Legal Talk Network. Take it away, ladies. Hello, and welcome to another edition of the State Bar of Michigan's On Balance podcast on Legal Talk Network. I'm Rob Mathis from the State Bar of Michigan, sitting in today for your regular hosts, Joanne Hathaway and Tish Vinson. We are live from the State Bar of Michigan's Next Conference 2018 in Grand Rapids. And joining me today, I have Justice Bridget Mary McCormack. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. I'm happy to be here. Before we get started, please tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, you bet. I am one of the seven justices on the Michigan Supreme Court. I started serving on the court January of 2013. So I've been here almost six years. Um, Before that, I was a full-time member of the University of Michigan Law School faculty. Before that, I was on the Yale Law School faculty, but I started my career in New York City as a public defender. I started in uh, representing people accused of crimes in New York City. So I've been doing lots of different kinds of jobs for the last 20-ish years um, and had a very lucky legal career. It sounds like you've been very busy. Yeah, busy is good though, right? Better than being not busy, I think. That is true. Yeah. So how have you um, managed your, your work-life balance? This is such an important question and a great question, and I get it in lots of contexts. Um, and I think women get it more than men, but I think it's just as important for men. Um, but I'm happy to have the chance to talk about it. So my first answer, I hope doesn't disappoint and I'll say more, is there's no such thing. And I mean by that, that if you focus too much on trying to have your work and the rest of your life um, in the perfect balance at all times, you will be constantly disappointed and you will um, be hard on yourself. And so my first piece of advice to young lawyers, uh, who I spend a lot of time with and certainly spend a lot of time with as a teacher, I continue to teach at the University of Michigan, is don't be so hard on yourself when things are not in balance from day to day, from week to week, and sometimes even from year to year. So I I always tell young lawyers that over the course of my career, I think I've gotten that balance close to right. But there were periods in my career where I was spending a lot more time at work than I was on kids and uh, other things that are important to me in life family. Um, And then there were other times in my professional life where I was spending a lot more time with kids. My oldest son was diagnosed with epilepsy when he was 10 and spent a lot of time in and out of a hospital for a a period of a couple years and a lot of time, a lot of time in doctor's visits and some hospital stays. And I, I was more his mom than any other professional role I was playing right then, which were a few. I was a faculty member and the associate dean at the law school, University of Michigan Law School. And I was more focused on my kid in those years. And I relied on my excellent colleagues to cover the bases. Um, Hopefully then when they needed it, I was able to cover for them. Um, So my first message, my top line message on this whole topic Mm. is don't expect it over the course of a week or a month or even a year. Think about it over the course of your career and figure out how to get it right. So uh as you stated, you're a, one of the Michigan's uh, justices on the Michigan Supreme Court. Uh, what are some special pressures that you have as a justice? So I think I'm not sure that the pressures that I face are any more significant than the pressures that any lawyer faces. Um, in fact, in some ways, I have the luxury of lots of time to make the decisions that I get to make. I don't bill by the hour, so I don't have clients, you know, telling me to hurry up or move faster or do more. And I, in some ways, think I have quite a bit of luxury in how I can figure out how to get my work done, where to get it done, when to get it done. Having said that, there's always more work to do than hours in a day or more work that I'm interested in doing than there are hours in a day. There's always more I can read for the cases we're working on. There's always um, more work to be done on the administrative projects that the court takes responsibility for that I think are critically important to how the court serves the public. There's always groups in the, out in the public who want to hear from me. And, you know, if I had more hours in my week, I would spend more time with more people talking about what we're doing and why the court matters, because um, I think that's critical. But I don't think those pressures really are worse than or different than in any significant way. The pressures that brand new lawyers face, partners at private firms face, Mm -hmm. lawyers who are legal services lawyers who are working always, you know, more hours than they're paid for to try and, you know, save somebody's housing or their public benefits or so, you know, in this profession, everybody has to figure out how to 
do the job that they are supposed to be doing as well as they can and take care of themselves so that they, you know, show up every day with, you know, their best self. So what are some um, techniques that you use to handle stress? I think everybody has different things that work for them. I'll tell you mine, but if they're not right for you, find yours. Whatever it is that brings you some peace, some um, focus, whatever that is, do that. For me, I do a lot of physical fitness because uh, running, biking, hot yoga, I love hot yoga, um, all of those, sweating um, and endorphins make a difference in how my day goes. So if I have not found the minutes in a day to do that, it's never as good a day. So almost every day I do something. And sometimes a lot of it. Sunday, this coming Sunday, I'm doing a century ride. So I'm going to do a hundred mile ride here in Southwest Michigan. And that helps me a lot. I will say that I thought that was enough. But for my birthday last summer, my children, who are all teenagers, young adults, bought me a subscription to a meditation service. So they apparently didn't think that my mm. fitness routine was enough. And they, they encouraged me to start meditation, which... Um, I've actually enjoyed. Um, I do the shortest one they give me. I do the three minutes a day, but I find that it actually really does help me with focus mm. and calming the mind. And so I encourage others who might've thought that was not worth their time to give it a shot. I don't think I would have done it if it weren't for my own kids saying, hey mom, we think this might help you. <laughs> but that's been quite helpful to me as well. So you, have, you said you have a hundred mile bike ride coming up. Yeah, are you a long Are you a long distance runner or? I'm a terrible runner and almost never a long distance runner. I've never been very good at running. I love swimming. I could swim for, you could tell me right now I had to go swim three miles and I could do it, no trouble. And I can bike for long distances, not fast. I'm not a, I still like ride the brakes on hills. I'm not, I'm not, mm. I'm not a daredevil. Um, and I'm a plotter, but I will get the century ride done. It'll be, it probably will take me seven hours, but I'll get it done. It sounds like a triathlete. I have done mini triathlons. I've never done a full Ironman, um, but I've done the sprint version many times. And there are some mm. great courses in Michigan. And I love that race. That's my favorite race because the swimming is my strongest leg. Um, and so I like the triathlon. It's a great race. But Michigan water is so cold. Well, yes. it's cold yeah. in the winter. It's great in the yeah. summer. It's yeah. perfect in the yeah. summer. It's perfect. Sure. Yeah. So if you had uh, some advice, you know, particularly to women lawyers, what would that advice be for, you know, handling profession, stress? Yeah. I think the best piece of advice I have for young lawyers is making sure they find a way, and this isn't possible for everybody in your first job, maybe not your second job, but find a way to get to the job that you really want to be doing. Um, and it's out there. If you went to law school, unless you really don't want to be a lawyer, then go find that. that um, that's fine too. But within the law, there are lots of different ways to do it. And just because um, most people take one track doesn't necessarily mean that's the best track for you. And if it's not the best track for you, get off it pretty soon and find your way to the best track for you. Because if you love what it is you spend your hours doing at work, you'll have an easier time making all of the rest of it balance. I really think that's right. All right so is there anything else you'd like to add regarding uh, work-life balance or being a, uh, a lawyer in Michigan? The only other thing I would say is I do believe that more and more places of work, you know, uh, whether they're public sector, private sector, are taking seriously the idea that when their employees have a good balance that allows them to take care of their family, take care of themselves, they probably work better. And so I guess I feel optimistic that we are, as a profession for the next generation, going to do better on how to accommodate people who have families or people who have hobbies or people who have other things they want to do, um, because we will see and we have seen that it will make them actually better lawyers, healthier lawyers. And, and that's win, 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 win. A lot of wins. Man, a lot of it's wins. a lot of wins. Uh. Yeah. So earlier you said there really isn't a work-life balance, but if someone was trying to figure out, and I know you said it's over the course, maybe over the course of your career, Yeah. but if someone is a new, a young lawyer, maybe just starting out, how do they try to figure out what is a good work-life balance? Yeah, I think that's a very hard question to answer in the, like, you know, in the aggregate. It's, yeah. it's so individualized because, and, and this is what I would, this would be my advice to somebody starting out is whatever it is for you right now, might not be what it is for you next year, and it might not be what it is for you in five years, and that's okay. You can have a year, I had many of them, where things were tilted a little more towards work than towards life, you know, uh, and then you'll probably have another year where things might have to be tilted a little more towards life than towards work. 
keep your eye on the big picture. It's a long career. It's okay if some year or another it tips in one direction or the other. Give mm-hmm. yourself a break. All right. Before we close out this podcast, I have one last question. If listeners would like to follow up with you, how can they contact you? What's your contact information? Um, they can find me on Facebook, Justice Bridget Mary McCormick. They can find me on Twitter at Bridget Mary MC. They can find me on Instagram, Justice Bridget Mary McCormick. So those are three good places to find me if they want to. Awesome. Well, that's all the time we have for this program. Thank you, uh, Justice Bridget Mary McCormick, for joining us today. I also want to thank our listeners for tuning in. If you like what you heard today, please rate us in Apple Podcasts. I'm Robert Mathis from the State Bar of Michigan. We'll see you next time for another episode of the State Bar of Michigan's On Balance podcast on Legal Talk Network. Thank you for listening to the State Bar of Michigan On Balance podcast. Brought to you by the State Bar of Michigan and produced by the broadcast professionals at Legal Talk Network. If you'd like more information about today's show, please visit LegalTalkNetwork.com, subscribe via Apple Podcasts and RSS, find the State Bar of Michigan and Legal Talk Network on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, or download Legal Talk Network's free app in Google Play and iTunes. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of, nor are they endorsed by Legal Talk Network or the State Bar of Michigan or their respective officers, directors, employees, agents, representatives, shareholders, and subsidiaries. None of the content should be considered legal advice. As always, consult a lawyer.